The Atlanta Beltline is the most comprehensive development effort ever undertaken in the city of Atlanta and among the largest, most wide-ranging urban redevelopment programs currently underway in the United States. The Atlanta Beltline is transforming the city. It will ultimately connect 45 in-town neighborhoods via a 22-mile loop of multi-use trails, modern streetcar, and parks. While the building boom brings new developments like the Beltline condos and west side high-rises, it is raising rental rates and some families are being displaced, causing a citywide race for affordable housing. I've compared rents like for a studio nearby. They start maybe twelve or thirteen hundred a month, which is probably three to four times what I'm paying for rent for a two-bedroom. Tawana Harris is Vice President of Brand, Content, and Strategic Initiatives for the Atlanta Beltline and is working to make sure that the brand reflects the inclusivity in Atlanta. Residents that live um, on the Atlanta Beltline or near the Atlanta Beltline prior to the new construction are absolutely critical and imperative to you know, the sustainability of this project. We want to ensure that we have implemented different um, processes and procedures to ensure that they are stabilized throughout the increase in the housing values. Um, sometimes those unintended consequences that come along with a project of this magnitude have impacted some communities, but we are really committed to ensuring that we are able to kind of stabilize those communities as we continue to build and continue to um, improve those neighborhoods. Along with the ribbon of parks, trails, and transit, the Atlanta Beltline was supposed to create at least 5,600 affordable housing units and apartments, a goal so important that the city council put it into law. We're here about to speak with Sasan Namat, an attorney and mediator with the Namat Law Firm in Atlanta, who specializes in construction law and real estate. The Georgia State University College of Law graduate is also a former Atlanta Beltline Housing Policy and Development Fellow. Here's the thing, the topic, as long as it remains for community developers to be uh, stacked against rural state developers, um, I think we would not see much of a progress. Um, the communities need to work together, look for innovative approaches to, um, to tackle the same problem. Um, the problem at this point is at least the way I look at it, um, a lot of same folks chase the same subsidies, chase the same funding. Funding is the issue. Uh, by restricting the way the supply comes to the market, not only we impact um, the, the amount of supply, but also knowing that the demand in Atlanta is, keeps on rising, um, knowing that the city of Atlanta at this point in time is projected to grow to 1.2 million people from 460 some thousand folks, um, the demand is going higher. So if the supply uh, doesn't build as fast as it used to, uh, it only impacts uh, the city in a negative way. I think I came here like a couple of years ago and like all the new buildings haven't been there before. So it's like a whole another place that's coming into it. So. Faced with an in-town affordability dilemma, on January 29, 2018, Atlanta became the first city in Georgia to adopt inclusionary zoning regulations. We sat down with Dr. Oakley, who was just appointed Editor-in-Chief of City and Community, the flagship journal of urban sociology. Inclusionary zoning is one of the aspects of inclusionary zoning, is to build housing at all income levels. All right. So there was a mandate when the Beltline began in the early 2000s that there would be X number of affordable housing units built along the belt line so it wouldn't be simply an engine of gentrification. And that didn't happen. It's too little, too late. That would be the first thing I would say. And secondly, if you look at the number of units that have been built and the number of units that they're committing to set aside as more affordable, and I'd say more affordable, not affordable to really low income residents who might be 50% or below the AMI. Um, that it's just, it's, it's nothing, it's a drop in the bucket. Um, and so, you know, they really haven't come through with their mandate or their promise that the Beltline would be inclusive in terms of housing.
I have a lot to explore in Atlanta, but I love the Beltline. More information and helpful resources, visit www.atlantabeltline.org. This is Maya Burris. Thanks for watching.